For the Lord has a hidden storehouse of wisdom made accessible to his godly ones. That is why, or rather, that is the beauty of this journey of learning, is that we don't learn in vain. There is something, there is something hidden for us in Christ in order to acquire every day. Hello, hello, and welcome again to another Honey and Milk podcast episode (laughs) hi i'm your host bernie stauda nice to meet you if you're here for the first time if you're coming back again welcome back and everybody get comfortable sit and enjoy your time here because this is one of the coolest places to be you get to sit with the holy spirit to learn more about jesus through the bible the living um the word of god and through our life experiences and um yeah Let's dive into today's topic. Today's topic is the journey of learning. So if you have listened to, or rather if you listened to the previous episode, I talked um, about how in Hebrews 5 verse 8, the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience and to learn something is a process. It's It's a journey. And yeah, so we'll be talking about the journey of learning. And before I continue, I'll be defining what learning is. I already said it is a process. So the definition of learning I have here is that learning is the process of acquiring new understanding, knowledge, behaviors, skills, values, attitudes, and preferences. And I'm going to read out um, a few scriptures that will now kind of be our foundation for for today's episode. One is Hebrews 5 verse 8. It says, although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Luke 2 verse 46 says, three days later, they found him in the court of the temple, sitting among the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And Luke 2 verse 52 says, Jesus grew, increased or increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So these scriptures are like describing Jesus's life here on earth and how he grew, how he matured. You in Luke 2 verse 46, that was when he was at 12 years old and um, his parents found him in the temple. Li- pardon me, listening to teachers, listening to the people there. And he was asking them questions. He was listening to them. And everything was the process of him learning. This was at 12. And then after that, when he goes back with his parents, the word of God says that he grew. He increased. He increased in in two, actually in three things. He increased in wisdom. He increased in stature. He increased in favor with God and with man. Um, One of the things that in those three things, I I want us to focus on wisdom. In order to increase in wisdom, wisdom is the use of our understanding. It is the applied, uh, rather, it is the application of our understanding that is like a condensed, (laughs) a condensed definition of wisdom. It is um, our application of our understanding. And in order to understand something, you also have to know something. So Jesus, the Son of God, that was fully God and fully man, he knew all things. He, that is one of the characteristics of God. He is omniscience. Yes, I always sometimes mix them. <laughs> but omniscience is knowing everything. So he is omniscience. He knows everything. But he came in the likeness of flesh. That means he had to grow. He had to learn how to walk. He had to learn how to eat. He had to learn how to play. He had to also learn the scriptures. He also had to read the the Bible and the scriptures that were there. Even though back then they didn't have the Bible, they had the Torah. But he was also in the process with the normal Hebrew boys about whenever they went to the temple for the feast, they would also read out the Torah and learn all of that. 
which is why um, later on as he grows up and as he starts his ministry, they can refer to him as rabbi because in the Jewish culture, the rabbi means to teach those that teach. So that means he had to have learned and gone through the process of learning in order to teach. Even at 12 years old, they were already marveled at his wisdom and at his understanding when he was there in the temple. So this is just to point out that learning is a process and even Jesus himself went through the process of learning. And the crown scripture of it all is Hebrews 5 verse 8 where it said that Jesus learned obedience. So why am I actually talking about this? Because sometimes we want to beat ourselves up so much for not knowing something at a particular point. Um, Sometimes we feel like okay, why am I taking so slow to understand some things in the Bible? Why am I taking so long to get to the point of like the men of God that we see online that they're teaching and you're like, wow, I've read the scripture so many times. <laughs> I read, or rather, I've never met, it's either you've read it so many times and you never um opened up itself the way that they would explain it or you have never come across it straight up (laughs) i don't know like maybe you've never gone through the bible you know sometimes you start the bible in a year plan and then halfway it just kind of fall off (laughs) which is not good don't do that be consistent But I'm just saying, like, sometimes we beat ourselves up so much. We want to be perfect all at once. We want to get to the end of learning like that. But that is not how it works. There is a journey to learning. There is a process to it. If you are born on this earth, you would have to go through the process of growth. It doesn't matter how great your destiny is. It doesn't matter how great your fate is on this earth you still have to go through the process of growth and one of the 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 things that come with growth is learning you have to learn you have to learn how to walk you have to learn how to talk actually you have to learn how to write you have to learn how to do quite a lot of things and <clears throat> just as how you would not beat a toddler for falling down like you have let's say you have a one-year-old that maybe doesn't speak fluently you're not going to start beating that child for not speaking fluently at that age because they are still at the age of learning and so why do we then beat ourselves up as christians be it new christians or even old christians when we are not at a point that we have not matured ourselves too. Yes, there is a there is another part of this where um, I'm reminded of a scripture that Paul was talking to a church and was like, um, by now you guys were meant to be teaching other people, but you are still taking the milk of, you know, you're still learning the foundational things. But by now, with all the things that I have taught you, by now you are supposed to be eating the solid like solid foods instead of milk you are meant to be teaching other people instead of still being taught and um that's why i say it's another side because there is the potential to become lazy when you stop or rather when you become i don't know i would say this maybe a little bit too accepting of that learning of the of the fact that learning is a process you start to elongate your journey it's like knowing that you're meant to walk from maybe walk for five hours and then if you know that your destination is five hours away you now say that okay because it is so far i'm now going to crawl when actually you have the ability to just walk normally and get it done at five hours. Now you're crawling because you're saying that, oh, it's so far. That is also the other side of understanding that learning is a process where you start to accept and make it out like, okay, it is a process, so I shouldn't be eager or still be as fervent as I should be. So, no, 
don't do that <laughs> still be fervent but also do not allow yourself enter into the trap of perfectionism where you want everything to be done at the snap of the fingers where when you make your mistakes or when you learn new things and when you because also you also learn by experience sometimes you have you do mistakes and then the lord will teach you a lesson through that but then you want to stay and beat yourself up for falling into that mistake no don't do that accept that learning is a process accept your mistakes accept the lessons um, from those mistakes but don't allow yourself to wallow in that spot take up your cross and keep on walking there's still a long way away you know um learning god and the things of god is is a process it is not to condone sin but it is to bring us out of a vicious cycle of perfection first john 2 verse 1 tells us not to sin but if we do not when so that is the beauty of that first john 2 verse 1 um, a lot of people say, quoted, you know, that say, okay, we are covered, you know, you then become, you then, I'll say then you, you then maltreat grace. Yes, that would be the best way to say it. You would maltreat grace, maltreat the gift of salvation, that the free gift of salvation that Jesus has paid for us. And then you want to allow yourself to sin. No, first John verse two, first John two verse one says, if we sin, not when we sin, we're not to allow our lives enter into the cycle of when we sin. It should be that we press on to a life where it becomes if we sin, not when we sin. But if we do sin, we have one that will support us in heaven and one on earth. The one on earth is um the scripture, John verse 14, verse 26, shows us that we have an advocate. So when I say support us in heaven and support us on earth, I want to equate that support with the word advocate. So 1 John 2 verse 1 tells us, uh, tells us of an advocate in heaven, which is Jesus Christ, our high priest that intercedes for us. But we also have in John 14 verse 26, an advocate that the Lord sent as a promise to us here on earth. And that person is Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit. And both of them are, ad are advocates and both of them are, are teachers as well. Because in order for you to learn, there has to be one learning and one being, um, one being taught. So one is the teacher, one is the student. So that means as a student, as we are on this earth, in the journey of our learning, we are forever students. We will always be students. We will always have to learn a new thing every day, every moment of our lives. Even 70-year-old people are still students. <laughs> They're still very much students. Yes, they are students that have been in the school system of life a lot longer. It's like how those in high school maybe know more, not maybe actually, should know more than primary people in primary school but they are all still students. So even those in their old age are still students. And that means that we'll always have a teacher. We'll always have a teacher. And one of our teachers is Jesus in heaven. And the other of our teacher is Holy Spirit that is with, here, with us here on earth. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things and remind us of all our Rabbi Jesus told us. And the example of Jesus, as well as his words, are taught to us by our Rabbi, the Holy Spirit. Our Rabbi Jesus gave us words that are found in the Bible. And he gave us an example of, of the reinstated man, basically the perfect man. So he is our teacher in that he teaches us through being a role model. Yeah, so there are some people that you can say, oh, I have this role model, and you try to emulate their lives um, in order to gain the results that they have gotten. And I think there is a verse in the Bible that actually talks about that as well. Um, if I find it, I'll also <laughs> put it up. If I don't, sorry. <laughs> um, well, 
our teacher, the Holy Spirit, he teaches us by reminding us of all things and teaching us all the things that have been written down. So whenever you're about to open up your Bible and you want to do Bible study, you have to invite the Holy Spirit to teach you. If not, you will be going through school learning materials without a teacher to actually show you what those materials or give you the fullness of what those materials entail. So every time that you open your Bible, you want to study the Bible. You want to learn from your experiences. You want to also learn from creation and from nature. You have to have an active conversation with the Holy Spirit because he's the one that will teach you. And as we take our path with Christ and as we walk with him each day, we'll also, we'll also never know everything. There will never be a point where we get to the omniscience of God. Never. It is only God that knows everything in its entirety. So we should stop trying to reach a place of, oh, I know everything. Um, because that would also allow us to enter into the snare of pride as well. So when we take the heart of a student and the mind of a student, it checkmates pride in our hearts because every single person is um, it's a possibility and an opportunity of gaining new knowledge. Every person that you come across, every experience that you come across, every um, information you get is an opportunity to learn. It is either an, an opportunity to learn more about Christ or how to avoid anything that would get you away from learning about Christ. That's why I said everything is an opportunity to learn. There's a lot of fake news around in you know, media and just floating around, as well as false teachers, false prophets, false doctrines, false churches. When you come across these things and you learn from it, what you can learn from it is how the of how they look like in order to avoid them. So that's why I say everything is an opportunity to learn. Even the bad things have a, a um how they call it. <laughs> They also have they also give the opportunity to learn new information that would be useful for you. And that is what I want us to have, the hearts of students, the mind of students, that everything we come across, every experience that we go through, I think there's even a verse that talks about the sufferings that we go through, the persecution that we go through. No, I'd say it's sufferings, not persecution. It is to develop endurance and proven character. And to bring forth hope, you know. So even in the bad things, we still have opportunities to learn and to get better in our walk with Christ. Um, yeah, we will never know everything, but we can know everything hidden on our life path by the Father for his sons. And I say this because of the scripture, Proverbs 2 verse 7 it says he stores away um he stores away wisdom for the righteous or for the oh tpt how tpt says proverbs 2 verse 7 tpt version it says for the lord has a hidden storehouse of wisdom made accessible to his godly ones that is why or rather that is the beauty of this journey of learning is that we don't learn in vain. There is something, there is something hidden for us in Christ in order to acquire every day. Every step that we walk with Christ is an opportunity to um, take and let us to with, withdraw from the storehouse of wisdom that God has for us. And yeah, just as Jesus Christ increased and grew in wisdom. That is also the template and the it is also the pattern in Christ that we get to emulate. We also get to grow and increase in godly wisdom. So let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you that we get to walk with you each day. 
I thank you that we get to sit at your feet and learn from you each day. I thank you that everything is an opportunity to learn more about you, more about your kingdom, as well as what is and isn't related to your kingdom and to your righteousness, O oh God. I ask that you keep us in a place of students all the days of our lives. And I ask that you keep us close to the feet of Jesus, close to the feet of the Holy Spirit, that we might learn everything that you have hidden away from us, or rather hidden for us. Thank you, Lord, because you answer our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Take care of yourself. Bye.